Hey everybody, it's the coach, and this is Monday Night Football on EA Sports. Coming up next, we've got what should be a good one between the Denver Broncos and the Chicago Bears. I'll be back at halftime to look at some of these stats and scores from Sunday's action. But for now, it's Monday Night Football. And to call the action, here are Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. First opened way back in 1924, but renovated in 2002. There's a look inside Venerable Soldier Field in Chicago. The scene a few moments ago, here it is. It's unlike any other in sport as both teams made their way out of the tunnel. These folks are fired up as their guys are ready to do battle between the Denver Broncos and the Chicago Bears. Hello, everybody. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon and partner. Our long national nightmare is over. After six months away, we're back to playing football. And this is way better than Watergate, isn't it? Now we get to have some fun. Watch the veterans. They'll play a little bit. We know that. But the big thing, this new crop of rookies and young guys, they get their chance to take the field and earn their spot. Parky now ready to get this one started and off we go from Soldier Field and this will not be returnable it's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback so here are the Broncos now for their opening drive the man in charge for this crew the 6-1 quarterback from the University of Houston it's the veteran Case Keenum and what a career he had for the Cougars how about over 5,000 yards passing in three seasons there each of three seasons and it hasn't stopped because last year in Minnesota, 2017 for the Vikings, over 3,500 yards, went 11 and three as a starter. He still has the magic. Keenum now on first down. And that's complete to the tight end Hireman. And he's able to get out to the 32, brought down there. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice, easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. They'll operate from the 32-yard line here, second and three. And they're not going to get this one off in time. It'll be a delay. Still second down. They are pushed back five yards by the delay of game second and eight. From the gun, here's Keenum. Into heavy traffic, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Kyle Fuller, and they'll set up shop in enemy territory at the 45-yard line. Well, this had trouble written all over from the start. He's got two extra defensive backs in the game he's got to deal with. They're in a dime set, so everywhere he's looking, he's seeing a different color jersey. And sure enough, this one winds up being intercepted. Chicago getting ready to go as they take the field. Hey, 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 hey. After the interception, here's Trubisky. He completes it right side to White. No gain there on the completion. Second and ten. Brandon, just mark that under the category of just not successful. Trying to throw the ball, just didn't work on that one. Completed it. No yardage. Go. 
Had the completed pass, but for no gain, stopped right at the line, so it's second and ten. From the shotgun is Trubisky. Looking left side, and he's got a man. It's Burton. And here he'll be brought down a little shy of the 35 at the 36. And they'll get nine there as that sets him up better for third down. Let's just break this down and make it pretty simple. Key to the drag route, letting the play develop, finding the hole in the defense, and giving your athlete, yes, athlete, a chance to make something happen once he has the ball in his hands. a little short on the last pass play. They did get nine yards out of it, leaving him with his third and one. And they'll let their fullback try and push the pile. And he gets it to the 34. Good enough for the first. They only get two there, but on third and one, that's all they needed to keep the drive going. On third and one, it seems natural to just turn and hand it to the biggest guy you have in the backfield. But usually, he's not the primary runner. So for the defense, they're often keying on the running back because he's the guy who gets the ball more often, and the fullback is the blocker. When he ends up carrying the football, that's a heck of a tendency breaker. And now you're just trying to jump on his back and hold on. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. From the shotgun now, here's an inside give. And he was able to shed the tackle, but the reserves come in for the stop. The all-pro Von Miller there on the tackle. Good solid gain on first down, about what you'd expect from the big guy carrying the ball. comes out and that's because the offense did not get the playoff in time Still second and you can see the head coach he is not happy everyone getting away from him right now because he's frustrated that they didn't get the ball snapped in time now Trubisky to throw on second throw left side complete that's Martin and he's going to get it down to the 33-yard line here. It'll be a pickup of just two, and that'll make it third down. And the big guy catches the ball out of the backfield, and oftentimes that's quite a surprise to the guys playing defense because not ordinarily thought as a pass catcher, it often works when they decide to dial it up. On third down, Trubisky. This complete to Martin. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. A nice pick up there, 10 yards, and it'll move the sticks. How about the start throwing the football? Four for four on this opening drive. Oh, he's slinging it. And oftentimes when you talk about slinging it, you're thinking about a guy throwing it all over the yard, not necessarily accurately. In this case, though, he's honing in on his targets, and he's delivering. Yeah, the opening script, however, they drew it up for this first drive, going to plan so far. First carry now for Jordan Howard. And he'll get a couple here down to the 22. Well, we saw him there trying to get it to the outside, trying to get to the perimeter, but not a whole lot of room there. But there's got to be one positive to that. If you keep moving laterally, creases tend to develop as the game moves on, and they can run it back inside later. From the shotgun now, here's an inside give. Martin flexing the muscle and brought down, but not before they get it inside the 10 to the 7. It's a really nice 15-yard pickup, and now it's first and goal. I know a lot of times we like to put players in certain boxes. He does this and he does that. But this guy, he can do a little bit of everything. He's not just a lead blocker or a guy who protects the passer. Handing the ball, he might want to get out of the way. A first trip to the red zone for the Bears. They've got it first and goal at the 7. Out of the gun, Trubisky. This is caught, and he'll be brought down here at the three-yard line. Nice job defensively to hold him to four, and now it's second and goal. Well, they're unable to convert that into much, but it's never a bad idea to try to get the ball into a tight end of his caliber's hands and see what kind of disruption he can cause.
So the ball position now at the three. Here's second and goal. Trying to punch it in with Howard. And forget about finding a lane. He barely had time to look up before he was planted in the backfield. They'll wind up losing three yards here. And that'll make it third and goal. and we're going to get a delay of game. Still third down. How crucial will those five yards be? We'll see as they come up again here, third and goal. From the gun, it's Trubisky. And he's got it. And he'll be brought down here at the three-yard line. They do get eight out of the pitch and catch. However, it's fourth down. He wasn't the primary target, but I think it was almost like a, a check down situation, wasn't it? Yeah, hoping he can break some tackles, a big tight end, but he couldn't do it. Yeah, get it to that big frame and hope he can scatter some bodies unable to get it done. A dozen plays on that drive that ends with the field goal. Let's go ahead and break out some of the old chestnuts here, right, partner? Keep the ball in front, rally to it, and make the tackle. Right? No big plays given up. No balls over your head. Bend, don't break. Hold on, hold on. Chestnuts? Ah, huh, you like Come that on. one? What does that mean, break out? The, just because you break, you break chestnuts? I, I'm not sure about that, but I'm just going with why they said that. I have no idea. Try to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. And the catch made. This is Emmanuel Sanders. And they work this well upfield across the 45. A good pick up there, a 22. Keenum now on first down. And his throw here is incomplete. Let's talk about the starting lineup offensively for the Denver Broncos, and let's talk about Devontae Booker. I always described him as a guy who ate carries in college, meaning just keep handing it to him, and he got better as the game went on. Had a knee injury his last year at Utah. Comes in a little bit older than your average back, but, boy, is he skilled and talented. And he emulates Emmitt Smith in one way. Loves to keep the ball in his left hand at all times. And the big meet on the D-line. We'll see how they do today. And I'd hate to be an offensive lineman having to deal with these guys. They come in hungry, mean, and confident. They think that no one can block them. So a third and nine, and six defensive backs out there in the dime. Patrolling the passing lanes. From the gun, it's Keenum. And he's got Hireman. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. That one good for 13 and a Denver first down. When this offense can get their tight ends involved, they can move the football. Here, a nice route, able to look it in, and picks up the first down. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. They go play action here on first down. And that is incomplete here. And that's what he's got to be happy to have back. There wasn't a hole open in the zone. You'd have to think on early downs like that first down there, you need to be a little bit more careful. Yeah, fortunately for him, got a couple more downs to play with. So line of scrimmage still the 39 on second and 10. And now whistles and a flag, and I think we got a jump here. Neutral zone infraction, defense. A free five yards as the defense jumps. I know it's an anticipation game down. for them, but it's also a reaction game, and they reacted poorly on that one. 
So the penalty certainly helps them out as they come up on second and five. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll be a little shy of the 25 here at the 26-yard line. It goes as a gain of eight, and it moves the chains. Usually we see runs like this as the defense breaks down later in the game, but this guy is setting the tone early, running through all types of tackles and put the defense back on its heels. Second effort there on the strong run. And then drop just inside of the 20. Eight yards on the pickup, and now they'll have some options on second and short. Pretty effective run there, and now they can start to smell that end zone. Pound the rock. Make sure you use your O-line to set the tone of dominance and physicality, and pound the rock. To throw on second down is Keenum. And brought down, but not before they get it inside the 10 to the 7. It's a good gain of 11. Sets him up first and goal. Try the air now with Keenum. And it's caught. And he's able to get it down to the two-yard line. That'll bring up second and goal after the gain of five. It is hard in zone coverage to stop a curl route because when they see it, they just try and find the open spot and sit down. Yeah, we always talk about finding the soft spot in the zone. What's the key to doing that? How do you do it? You have to read what the coverage is. Is it too deep? Is it three deep? Because then you know where the linebackers are going to drop, what spots on the field they naturally get to, and you find that open space, and then you're in sync with your quarterback. He should be reading the exact same thing, and they put the ball right on you. Now Keenum throwing on second. Did he drop it? He dropped it in the end zone. It is tough to complete pass against zone defenses. The windows that you see open, they shrink pretty rapidly. How about being able to hit a moving target against a zone before the next guy can get there and make a play on the ball? Not easy for any quarterback, no matter the situation. And there, the defense won the battle. But do you put it in your quarterback's hands again? That's the question here on third and goal. They send Thomas out to the right by himself. Keenum going to throw. So that's back-to-back -back drives where they've thrown an interception. Ordinarily, we look at the offense and say, what's going on with your scheme? Maybe we should look at the defense and just give them a whole lot of credit. They've got them frustrated right now. Chicago getting ready to go as they take the field. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember they did put points on the board. Three points and, is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. And he'll get this up only to about the 22. It's the linebacker, Brandon Marshall, there on the tackle. Now, that's the defense that they were looking for, being able to get extra bodies to the point of attack to deal with the big guy carrying the ball. You really don't want to be in a position where it's a one-on-one -on -one tackle with him. On second down, Trubisky. And that one got tipped, kind of threw everything off. It brings up third. Well, prior to that, he had hit his first six passes to start the game, so on a nice little run to begin. It feels like this offense 
has carried its dress rehearsal into the game. You know, because you do practice it, you do go through it, and in this case, it is clicking exactly like they drew it up. From the gun on third down, it's Trubisky. And he'll go down just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. Give him two yards on that play, and it'll be fourth down. I wouldn't be surprised to see the next step in utilizing this position. It's actually utilized more of a scat back in this spot because we saw the catch there, right? He made it. He's a bigger, stronger guy, maybe not quite as elusive as maybe someone else you would put there. Yeah, down. didn't get the big yardage there you might out of a smaller back. Finding his safety valve here. That's complete. And down he'll go at the 25. So we've played one quarter here on a Monday night. It's a three-point game here early. And we're back to Soldier Field after this. Back alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. It's Bronco football to begin quarter number two. They've got a second down at five here to start things out. Here's a second and five now from the 25. Hurry up, here we go. The first throw for the backup Lynch. And this one taken in on the right sideline, but not in the field of play. They say it's incomplete. The throw led him a little too far. It brings up third down. All right, that one fell incomplete there, but the best quarterbacks, they'll miss on 40% of their throws somewhere in that neighborhood, similar to a great hitter in baseball who's going to fail Here seven out now. of ten Three times and still three. have a great year. Three. In this case, you want perfection, but way better than it hits the ground instead of going to an opposite throw jersey. Well, he's taken down, but not before picking up the first thanks to a flashy little spin move. The quick slant, good for eight and a first. That was a nicely run slant route, and what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps and cuts towards the middle of the field. And now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and give the quarterback a really nice target. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Now a play fake here on first down. He's going to float this one deep right side. That's caught inside the 20. It's a big play there for the Broncos. 48 yards. But well, simply no sense in wasting a great catch like that on a short gain. Get downfield like you just <laughs> did there and use it up that way. No dink and dunk. So the big play means just like that, they'll operate from the red zone now on first down. Here we go now. Blue line. From the red zone now, here's Lynch on first down. Finds Jake Butt over the middle. And he'll go down here at the 12-yard line. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Now that's staying ahead of the chains. Really good pickup on first down, hitting the tight end there. Now brings up a second and manageable. Just found a hole in that zone. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. Now let's go. Boom, let to throw again is Lynch. That is caught at the seven-yard line. And he's going to be brought down just shy of the five at the six. A five-yard gain, and now they're set up first and goal. And they pick up a first down, and that came out of the fullback position. But as you and I both know, that doesn't necessarily mean that's a fullback playing in that spot. Well, times have changed, right? The old-school fullback doesn't really exist anymore. We're not getting that same player out of college with all the spread offenses, not very many pro style, where you actually have a true fullback. We're having to make do in the NFL and put guys in that spot who emulate it but aren't necessarily that position. It'll wind up being a loss of two, and that'll bring up a second and goal. I know when I was a kid, I always got real excited when I saw those lateral-type runs, but the best backs that made it happen, they put a foot in the ground and just go. That didn't happen there. That play got swallowed up. And they get him behind the line, so that short gain on first down quickly negated. 
Call it a loss of two on the play. And that's going to bring up an interesting third and goal. Partner, you mind if I take off this headset and put on a coaching headset? You want to get this running game going? I want to get this running game going. I'm going down there and saying, gentlemen, we have got to run the football. We've got to get it going right now. Yeah, to this point in the second quarter, it has been a struggle. They've been stuffed twice here for losses. Now it's third and goal. the gun, Lynch, and that is incomplete. I think that was a good job there defensively. They did allow him to drive all the way downfield, but once they got their backs to the goal line, they really turned up the pressure. Yeah, they let him get all the way down here. Now the field shrinks. They've struggled to convert, and that last incompletion brings up fourth. So on fourth down, on comes Brandon McManus and the field goal unit for the Broncos. And McManus able to put it through, and that will tie us at 3-3. So they do get three points, but that's now three drives with only the three points, not a ratio that's going to win you many ball games. Not at all, Brandon, and think about it this way. We all know payoff is the key, right? And wouldn't we love to have the concession on every T-shirt that's been printed in football that says finish on it because that's the mantra everywhere. Got to be able to finish drives, put points on the board. Onto the field now come the Bears. And hoping to do better than they did their last possession when they punted the football. Appeal to the vanity of your offensive line. Tell them that they control your fate. Leverage guys. Win the line of scrimmage. If you do that, you start to win first down. You win second down. And guess what? You start accumulating first downs. And that's what they need in order to not punt the ball again. And he'll be hit as he releases it. And that'll fall incomplete. I think he had to unload that one before he wanted to. He was right up in his grill. I think he was a dentist there without a license, don't you? <laughs> Just not enough time for the play to develop. Just lucky it wasn't a fumble, really. Here we go now. Green, 39. Back to the air. Daniel on second down. And it's complete. The tight end, Deion Sims. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. A good gain of 14 there, and it moves the chains. Like so many tight ends nowadays, they have no problem at all putting him in the slot and letting him go to work, and that's a nice pitch and catch right there for a first down. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Here's the first carry for Tariq Cohen. And able to get this one all the way up to about the 46-yard line. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. And there we saw one of the downsides of blitzing during a rundown because sometimes you get out of your gaps. You don't fit the run quite as well because you're headed towards the ball carrier with abandon. Here we go now. They'll run it now out of the gun. And no room to maneuver there. Give him a yard up to the 47. The good run on first down followed up by a not-so-good run on second down. Now let's find out they're going to stick with the run here on third down. A lot of people would love to see some play action here. I say go with your best running play over your best blocker. On third down, it's Cohen. And eventually taken down, but how about that athletic spin move we saw? Gives him the first down yardage. Eight yards on the pick up there, and it moves the sticks. I don't know about you, but that almost felt like old-time football there. Third and two is not necessarily just a hunting down anymore. A lot of times they want to throw the ball. They went back to the roots and powered forward and got the first down. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. Now let's go! Now they'll run it with Cohen. And he'll lose yardage here. Back at the 47. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. Well, forget about finding a lane there. He barely had time to look up before he was planted in the backfield. Probably fortunate he was able to hold on to the football. Now Cohen, and he'll get this down only to about the 46. 
Demarcus Walker there on the stop. Well, he hasn't made much of an impact in the running game thus far, and after that last run, not much is going to change in that area. He hasn't been able to get anything going, and really the offensive line not helping him much. All right, here we go. Throwing on third down, Daniel. Being chased, and he's going to have to eat this one as down he goes. Demarcus Walker able to drop him for a loss of two, and that'll bring up fourth down. Well, Brandon, sometimes I think when we watch games, we're actually watching a living museum because we're seeing the evolution of positions almost with each passing game. How about defensive ends nowadays and the way that they can run almost all the way across the field? It is unbelievable, isn't it? I mean, they're, they're so strong, but they're so lean, they can move so quick with those bodies. It's almost unfair. You're supposed to be able to know where a defensive end is supposed to be on every play. These guys flash so quickly, you're not sure where they're going to end up. Here's Pat O'Donnell now as he'll punt it away for the second time. The Bronco offense now set to come back out onto the field. And they had three points last time, but they didn't want three points because they were well within range of scoring a touchdown. We'll see if they can do better now. I'm with you on that one. Let's just go ahead and be frank about the whole thing. The only one happy about the three points. The kicker. Exactly. You put it through the post. That's going to help him with contract time. But that offense, they're thinking, let's get in the end zone this time. I don't know if that helped him with contract time. And now this is intercepted. My goodness. Picked off around. 27, and he will score. Touchdown, Chicago. Hey, partner, I do know this. If you're a defensive back, you have more chances to make a team now than ever because people are using five defensive backs, six defensive back packages. Not exclusively, but way more than before. That was a nickel package there, and what a pickoff. Why is that? Why are they using that more? Because more people are throwing the ball on earlier downs than ever before. This has become a passing league, and because of that, more defensive backs on the field on most plays. Parkey adds the extra point, and the lead is now 10-3. to So the defense creating some points, not only getting the interception, but then returning it to the end zone for the pick six. So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six. And now the kick is away. Now on the return, Brendan Langley. And he'll take this across the 25. A couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line. And Denver getting set to take the field. Lynch will lead up the Broncos here with a first and 10 at their own 27. Here we go now. Green, 39. Green. Back to the air. Lynch after the pick six. And he fires one that's intercepted. Picked off near the 44. And the possession is theirs at their own 43-yard line. Well, that's a drive killer right there. Not a really confident throw either. This one was kind of up for grabs, and it's going to come down the hands of the wrong team. There's Anthony Miller as they trot back out to go on offense. Second quarter, a guy like him, no catches, so that's the surprising part. But they're winning, so maybe they've been able to do some other things effectively, I guess. And they found other ways, haven't they? Because the receivers will tell you, offense needs to run through us, but they're managing to right, get it go. done in this oh, ball game man. without having to actually do that. I wouldn't expect them to stay silent for the rest of the game. Man. Yeah, yeah you've got to think that his first catch is coming at some point. That's complete to the Memphis man, Anthony Miller. A very solid gain of 27. So there on that play, offensively, they ran the crossing route. Defense was in zone coverage. So as a former DB, how tough is it to defend that? It's really difficult because your natural inclination is to chase the receiver and maybe leave your zone. So you have to have discipline in order to Talk to your other coverage guys and let him know that that receiver's crossing from your zone to the next zone. He's coming your way. Make sure you have him. And then when the ball is actually thrown, secure the tackle. When they're moving on crossing routes, if you miss a tackle, it usually results in a big play. So first and 10 now from the 30. Here we go now. This is Cohen. They'll get it to the 23-yard line. 
A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. Playing as a 3-4 front is really challenging for offensive linemen because they can do so many different things. But when you're running the football, if you can handle the nose tackle up front and then maybe a guard can slide up to the second level and block a linebacker, that's when you have success running the football. And he'll be taken down near the 20 at the 21. They got two of the three they needed there. It leaves them with third and just a yard. Brandon, we talk all the time about those hybrid players, guys who could do more than one thing. And I think if you're playing strong safety in the NFL today, you are a true hybrid. Part linebacker, part cover guy. And coming up, sticking his nose in the mess there and making a nice play defensively. And not going to be able to push this forward. He runs into a wall right at the line of scrimmage. On every snap, the defense is trying to establish who they are. But on third and short, that's really when you put it out there and tell people who you are. And that's exactly what they did. For the offense, they're looking at their offensive line and saying, guys, where are you? We need you on those plays. No problems in the field goal department so far. He's two for two. Pretty reliable here in this game, isn't he? And to me, that bodes well for them. If they need him late in the game, his confidence should be sky high. Devontae Booker getting ready to head back out there now with his offensive unit. You can count his carries on one finger. They've only given him the rock one time, Charles. What gives? So we can't draw any conclusions just yet. He has to touch the ball multiple times in order to get into a rhythm and have a chance to have success. You know who else gets into a rhythm? The offensive line. They feel better about what they're doing when they know they've had multiple opportunities to get it done. Yeah, with well, the conclusion we draw so far, they're losing here in the second quarter. Let's see if they change tunes. Now here's a pass on first down that's knocked away and incomplete. Second and 10 now from the 27. Again on second and ten, it's Lynch. And they're not able to hook up there. Incomplete. The one thing that I've liked defensively is that they've shown them a lot of different looks here in the first half. They've come after them. They've sat back. I think that's what you need to do to keep an offense guessing. And they certainly have kept them on their toes. That's why they haven't had much success on the scoreboard. Sideline throw. It's complete. And a nice job there of keeping the toes inbounds. Coming up at the half, a reminder, we go back to Orlando to check in with Jonathan Coachman. He'll have a look back at our first half, as well as a look ahead to what's coming up later this weekend. So on fourth down, here's Marquette King to punt it away. The Bears offense now getting ready to take over. And they split the uprights last time for three. They've got the lead. They're not going to play this conservative. They're, they're not hoping for another field goal. They're hoping for a touchdown. I'm with you on that one. I like where your head is. I like the way you're thinking because you're exactly right. Trying to sit on a lead right, and play go. that way, Green, that doesn't work too well for most teams. Run your offense. Yeah, Run what you do best. Again. Exactly. Put it all the way down and try to increase your lead in a big way. And the best way to do it touchdowns the completion good for three and it's second down now second and seven from the 23 all right here we go here's daniel now on second down he'll leave it for cohen complete how about another they pick up 12 on the play there and they move the chains so many times you hear today's nfl described as a space game Get your best players into space with the football in their hands. That's why sometimes you just swing it out to your runner, get him out in the flat, and let him have a chance to make people miss an open field. A gain of six there on first. Fired that one in there, able to make connection on a nice in route. With those faster passes and they're going that fast, any hesitation as a quarterback that the deflection, if you miss, might be bigger and lead to an interception? Yeah, and the deflection works both ways. Maybe a defender gets a hand in the way and it pops in the air. And sometimes you throw it so hard, your receiver can't handle it, and he pops it up in the air for the defenders to grab as well. But a moot point there is they were able to connect. Throwing again on second down, but this time it's incomplete. So he can't hang on, and as I watch that unfold, I remembered an expression that I've heard, maybe from you, I don't know, but you're going to get hit anyways, might as well hold on to the ball. Well, you know a coach <laughs> said that, right? Yeah. Not an actual player, not a chance at all. Way easier said than done. 
The Bears on third down. Three for seven so far in this game. This is third and four. Now let's go. Three, Once again, Daniel finds his target. It's Bellamy. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. As the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. A couple of first downs has the football position at the 43 as they come up first and 10. On first and 10, Daniel. Throwing right and that's complete. Now the Bears going to use the second of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. So we're back in the offense getting set following the call of that timeout. So first and 10 now from the 30. All right, here we go. 3, 19. Now Daniel on first down. He's going to dump that off to his running back, Cohen. Heck of a move and then brought down near the 23. It's a gain of seven, and that'll bring up second down. And just in general, Charles, on a play like that, how tough is it for the defense to account for a running back essentially being a receiver downfield? It's very difficult, especially right, if the running go. back has Move skills in. like a receiver, and you're aware of that before the game even begins. So throughout your practice sessions, you're going to have to be aware of him. Where is he lining up? What can he do? What kind of damage can he do to us downfield? And who can match up with him? without weakening our overall defense. You're exactly right. It's a tough task to match up to him. So now the field goal unit trots out there for the third time tonight. From the left hash, it's a 36-yard attempt. And Parkey's kick is good. And the lead stretches, 16 to three now. So he's been a busy man here in this first half. That's three field goals for him now. And not just three field goals, but three for three. So even though the offense has struggled a bit putting it in the end zone, they still been able to come away with points due to his leg. Parkey now following the made field goal to kick this one off. This will be fielded at the eighth. And he'll get it up to about the 26 yard line just across the 25. Final 10 seconds of the half as they've got it first and 10. All right, here we go. 3, 19. On first down, Green. And he'll take this up near the 35, maybe the 34. Personal foul, face mask, defense. So that flag will cost him 15. And it doesn't matter anymore how you get the face mask. Any part of it, that's going to be 15 yards. Excellent field position after the face mask penalty. First and 10 out near midfield. Set. Green 39. Green 39. Throwing. Lynch. He's going to loft one deep left side here. And nearly another interception. They've been around the ball all game. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. Play of the half, it's Lynch. He's going to float this one deep right side. It's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. So we have reached halftime in our first preseason matchup of the year. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. Back to you guys in just a minute. 
as we've started the countdown to opening night. Three more weeks of preseason action follow this, and then we get it all started less than one month from tonight. In our game, most of the starters have made their cameo and departed, but plenty of youngsters out there with a lot to gain or lose as we get you right back out to Brandon God. All right, Coach, thank you. And we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. And he nearly broke that for more, but as it is, they'll start this drive at about the 37-yard line. So here's the Bears' offense now as they get set to start this third quarter. This is sort of what you would call a put-away drive, isn't it? I mean, they score here, especially a touchdown. It's almost out of reach. It certainly feels that way, and I think that they're going to call their plays accordingly because what you really want to do, even though you know the scoreboard is still up there and the game's going to go on, I think you can take the spirit away from another team. That Their drive and will to come back and win can be taken with another score right here. It's still third quarter, but you just get that feel. Yeah, they're teetering right there on the brink, aren't they? It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. Kid had a ton of success here so far, but you get the feeling that he might be on the verge of popping one. Yeah, even on that one, there was a little bit of a hole, but it closed there quickly at the end. Hurry up, here we go. They try again with Cohen. Call it a gain of three, but not enough to move the sticks. It'll be third and about a foot or two. They know that old expression, it's not my night. It hasn't been his so far. I don't know if the legs are a little bit heavy. Sometimes having to hang out all day and play doesn't exactly play to your advantage, but it's been a go tough now. go for him. And every time he looks up, somebody's there defensively. That was the same case on that play. The catch made by Miller. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. For 15 yards there on the catch and run. Got to say, I was a little surprised to see him, Charles, come out in the shotgun on third and less than a yard. Yeah, but the way the NFL is nowadays, we hardly ever see anyone really run for it on short yardage. So they're going to throw the football more times than not. That was a nice, easy rhythm throw right there, and they pick up the first down. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Let's go! They'll run it now, out of the gun. So he got three of one tackle, but couldn't do a whole lot else. I call that play a success. A nice inside run sets up a very manageable second down, a very solid gain on that play. Again, it's Cohen. And he's got this down almost to the 20 before he's dropped. A nice pick up there of 11 yards, and it'll move the sticks. Now, this is an example of breaking down a defense, because on a lot of these runs, he's getting past the point of attack, and guess what he's doing? Forcing the secondary guys to have to make a lot of tackles. in there to sack him for a loss of six. Hindsight is 20-20, partner. Maybe they should have kept it on the ground again. Well, it almost looked like the O-line was run blocking again. I mean, they opened up a big hole last time. This time they opened up a hole, and the quarterback got sacked. Work to be done here on second and 16 after the sack. They run. This is Cohen. And he went nowhere. He'll lose yardage back to the 29. It'll go as a loss of a yard, and it'll set up third down. I like the strategy. Extra tight ends, extra beef. They want to run the football, but that means they probably want to run it inside. If you get strung out on the perimeter, you're in peril. Yeah, we saw the result. Negative yardage. Really in a hole here, third and 17, following the two negative plays. Here we go now. Three, nine, two. The 
from the gun. Here's Daniel. Over the middle complete. That's Cohen. And he gets it all the way down inside the 10 and mark him at the 5. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. And I know you can't really see it, but that play spells frustration with a capital F for the guys on defense. They covered everyone else, end up going to the running back out of the backfield, and he picks up a back-breaking first down. They'll try and run for it on first and goal. And he's going to press this one forward as they stop it right around the one. Give him four on the carry there at second and goal. When you look at the geography we're staring at, this part of the field, don't you always think of big backs carrying the football, bruisers trying to pound it in? Instead, we're looking at a little more of a scat back type, and he's trying to make it happen. Yeah, they were with the elusive slippery guy. Couldn't get in there, though. And a nice move will yield nothing as he's stopped behind the line. That'll be a loss of a yard, and it leads to a third down. His path became similar to almost running a stretch play, didn't it? Trying to find a crease, anywhere to put his foot in the ground and cut back. It just never materialized. From back at the two, here's third and goal. Here we go now. They'll give it to him right up the gut. And he'll actually lose a little bit of yardage here. Back to the two. A loss of a yard, and it brings up fourth. That's a really alert defense there because they saw the heavy look come in from the offense, countered it with extra linebackers who brought a little bit of speed and heft and able to really make a big-time play for their defense. So out comes the field goal team once more. From the right hash at a bit of a tight angle. Oh, they flip it to the kicker. He looks like he's going to throw it. And that is caught. Touchdown, Bears. Deion Sims, a two-yard touchdown grab. And the Bears will extend their lead. That drive that really increased their cushion felt very military to me. Very precise, methodical, that's one of the words you've taught me. And they just got it done. And slowly but surely now starting to pull away a little bit. Things looking good for them here in the third quarter. Not only pulling away, but you mentioned that slowly but surely. You also that's drain good. clock, too, with a drive like that. So you really give yourself an advantage. To throw is Daniel. And he floated one out there incomplete. They attempted to fade to the back corner of the end zone unsuccessfully. And I've been with you long enough, Brandon. I know that's not one of your favorite calls. Well, it's interesting. Before working with you, I always viewed that as you're just taking away space and you're trapping yourself in a corner. But you actually have told me they're trying to create space where space is not. Yeah, it's really a, it's a weird deal, isn't it? But you've got to just move that defender inside to create that separation and that little bit of space where there just isn't much. And this will be a touchback as that sails over the end line. So now a look at the Broncos as they head back out there for their first possession of the second half. They trail offense, first time to touch the ball in quarter three, and we'll see what they can do. And I can't wait to see what they have planned because some teams script to start a half. Let's go. Other teams just go, okay, these are the sequence of plays we want to run. These things worked well for us. And sometimes they throw in that big chunk play right away. Shocker. Try and get after them early and try and create a big play to give themselves some momentum. See what they have up their sleeve. A gain of 11 to kick off the drive, and it's a quick first down. Despite the score, despite the deficit, no quitting this guy. He's running angry, running through arm tackles. He wants to change what that scoreboard is saying. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Booker on first down, and he stopped immediately there. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. No gain on that run, and while this team is down, they're not out of it by any stretch of the imagination. Maybe you just have to think about different style of running in order to get this guy going. 
right back to Booker. And he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. It's a loss of four. Now third down. With the struggles we're seeing up front for the offense today, they've got to think about changing up their play calling. Some screens, some draws, some quick hitting plays in order to try and supplement the run game. You don't totally abandon it, but you try and give it a little bit of help. That'll be a loss of four yards on the play. And that's going to make it fourth down. Here's Marquette King now as he'll kick it away for the second time. And it spins away. It's a net of 40 there, a punt of 48, and a return of eight. And the Bears take over. And now Chicago getting ready to go as they take the field. The fourth down run successful. Now they look to pay it off on first down. All right, here we go. On first down, it's Daniel. On the right side, this is Miller. And he'll bring it up here to right at the 40-yard line. Give him nine there on the first down completion. Catch short of the marker by just a yard. Leaves him with a very manageable second and one. Hurry up, here we go. Green, three, and he'll go on the ground. Three, three, and at a 42-yard line here and brought down there. Two yards on the pickup there, but it's enough to give him a new set of downs. Second and one, and people want to run the football. This is where every back in the league is supposed to do exactly what we just saw there. Pick up the first down. back to him on first down and he will be brought down at about the 43 that time two yards on the carry there it'll be second down that was a particularly nice play because not only was it his job to force the play inside he was actually able to fold inside himself and make the tackle ultimately very nicely done Here we go now. Offense. Play clock all the way to zero. Didn't get the snap off. Five-yard penalty. Now. And you see the head coach writing that note on his play sheet right now. He's going to be addressing that with his staff. A sense of urgency. Get to the line of scrimmage. Snap the ball. Now let's go. Green 39. Green 39. On second down, here's Daniel. In a heavy traffic, and it's intercepted. Picked off at the 28, and he takes this one back into the end zone. And the Bronco defense has a touchdown. So a pick six there out of the nickel package. They went with five DBs. Almost becoming the base package in the NFL is the nickel. Hard to throw against. That was demonstrated one more time. A pick six going the other way. On here, Brandon McManus for the point after. Extra point from McManus is good. And that will get him one closer. A heck of a play there defensively, getting the interception, navigating his way into the end zone for the touchdown. So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. This will be fielded at the six. And he'll take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. Now the Bears offense ready to take over again. And Charles, you'd have to think this is where you want to start taking some time off the clock. Oh, definitely, because you got the lead, right? You take a good look up there and you say, okay, what do we need to do here? Well, you're not in full-out protect mode. You want to make sure you run it, throw it safe, take some time off, and eat it up. Green, 39! 
Not taking your advice, they'll throw first play. Over the middle, that's taken in by Bellamy. And he'll have it past midfield, almost to the 40, before being taken down. Give him 30 yards there. Well, partner, I'm not sure how this drive's going to end, but how about the way they flip field position there? A nice attacking play that picked up a heck of a chunk of yardage. So the big play gets him across midfield now for first and ten. And they'll go with a ground attack here. And very little there. He might have gotten a yard. Yeah, I think he got a yard to the 41. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because when they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. Let's go! And they'll try the ground game here with the running back. They'll fight forward for a couple down inside the 40. Now we're going to get a stoppage. Appears to be an injured bear on the field. Definitely the last thing you want to see here in a preseason game. We'll be right back. The Bears on third down. They've converted six times and could use a seventh here. This is third and seven. Shotgun snap for Daniel. That's caught left side by Bellamy. And he's going to get this inside the 30. Give him 10 yards there as this offense is on a roll. This drive continues to plunge forward. As an unbiased observer, I think it would have been interesting to see what they would have done if they hadn't gotten the first down there. But since they did, I guess the point is moved. And yeah, they're right there in that middle ground, field goal range, punt, go for it. But as you said, they picked it up. now six for six since coming back out of the locker room it's first and ten Here we go now. Three and here's three. Daniel three and oh a scrap for the football and he's gonna come down with it a very solid gain of 27 one quarter remains here as we wrap up the week on a Monday night we'll return with more preseason football on EA Sports Back now at Soldier Field. It's Bears football here. They also have the lead as well as we begin quarter number four. A good chance now to put this game on ice. This is first and goal. They come out here in the eye. They'll try and run for it on first and goal. And that one blown up quickly as he's going to be stopped before he could even get started. It'll be a loss of a yard, and that'll make it second and goal. Ah, uh, it's a tough one right there. He ran right into the teeth of the blitz as the linebacker was freed up in order to stuff that one for a loss. I think quarterbacks got to see that. Got to find a way to audible to something a little more advantageous. Back at the two now. Here's second and goal. Now let's go. He'll get it up the middle. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. It'll go as a loss of a yard, and it'll set up third down. Not only was that a terrific play, but that loss of yardage they created this close to their own goal line, that gives them a little breathing room now as they move them back. And they're breathing fire a little bit right now, aren't they? A lot of confidence being shown by them at this point of the game. Two runs, two one-yard losses. This is third and goal from the three. Chicago touchdown. Josh Bellamy from three yards out. And the Bears will add on to their lead. On those slants, everything happens so quickly. What makes it work? The timing between the passer and the receiver. In this case, a slant route. Ordinarily, it's probably about three steps before you go on the slant. 
in this amount of time. I think it was a two-step deal. Boom, put his foot in the ground and got inside for the pass. Got inside for the pass, got inside for the catch and the score. Parkey with the extra point, and that will make this a 19-point game. So that drive takes him down the field in eight plays, and it culminates in a touchdown for Chicago. Here's Parkey now, set to kick it away. This one taken from the seven. Gets past one man. Oh, and now he bowls him over. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. Now the Broncos offense, they get set to head back onto the field. And with this deficit, you can't have too many more drives like the last drive where you had to punt it away. You know what I would tell my offense right here? The punter doesn't exist, guys. He doesn't even exist. He's not, He's not a team anymore. I just cut him. All right? go so you've got to go out and create some offense for us here and give us some points. No way does that guy get on the field on this drive. Poor punter. Yeah, he, it, it wasn't his fault. But so, hey, listen, there's got, there's got to be casualties at times. We're trying to win a game. It's a lot of contact going on there. And in the end, unable to keep two hands on the football and bring it into his body. Everything looked pretty good until the finish. And he hits his target, Deshaun Hamilton. First target, first catch, and a first down. Lynch now, just 6 of 15 through the air. Not good, but first and 10 here. They go play action now. Lynch over the middle. He's got Deshaun Hamilton. And he's corralled, but not before getting it inside the 35. Another big hitter there. This one good for 18. Defensively here, you've got the cushion, but back-to-back -back pretty big pass plays there. Bend but don't break, but are they bending too much? I think that they are. To me, it'd be like playing basketball, and you put up a token press. Make sure you get up there and make them eat up some time. Make it a little bit of resistance so they can't just run it right down your throat. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. First and ten, it's Lynch. Got his man complete over the middle. It's Hamilton. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. They get ten more there, and I believe that'll be enough for another first down at will. Well, clearly one of his advantages as a passer is his height. Sit back in the pocket, fired over the middle. That makes things tougher defensively, doesn't it? It really does, because your goal is to move the quarterback off his initial spot when he gets his drop back completed. But when you have that type of height... He can stay in there if he's willing to take the hits and just fire over the top, which saves him time and actually completes a play a little bit quicker than it normally does for a quarterback has to slide and find open space to throw. To throw is Lynch. Complete out right to Jake Butt. And he'll get it down this time to the 17. A gain of six there on first. yards was the pickup on the last completion so here's second and four now let's go green 39 Lynch turns and gives to Booker and he'll be stopped after a gain of only a couple down to the 15 yard line well, how about the big guy there showing some agility he just float from his D tackle position in order to make that play the Broncos on third down they've converted just two for six thus far here it's third and two Running again, and again it's Booker. And they get to him quickly here as he stopped right around the 13. It'll be called a gain of two, and that'll leave him with some options here on fourth and inches. 
Well, they certainly had success throwing the ball on this drive and not as much running it as we just saw once again on that last play, stopped after a very short game. But I wouldn't abandon the run totally because otherwise, pass rushers just tee off on your quarterback. It makes it very, very difficult for him in that situation. And for the second time tonight, this field goal unit comes out here. And McManus able to put it through, and the drive will wind up yielding three. Well, with that field goal, you can argue they needed to get back within two scores, and they did indeed do that, but still a pretty uphill battle. Still going to take two fourth-quarter touchdowns to get back into it. And as you and I know, that's a tall order against any NFL defense. They're going to need their own defense to make some plays as well to give them an opportunity. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. Here's the Chicago offense coming back out onto the field. And that last drive, a long drive, but not just that. They had a great air attack going. Do they stick with that? I would think that they would because if they were competent enough to do it on the last drive, starting backed up in their own territory, why would you change anything? They've got to be confident about what they're presenting and continue to do so. That was the secondary. They really look clueless. And that was amazing because that drive went and went. No adjustments and no big plays by the defense to knock the ball away. Spot to take a shot here, second and a yard from the 34. Throwing on second down, Daniel. He gets it to Sims, complete. And brought down, but not before reaching the 45 yard line. Give him 11 yards that time and a new set of downs. He's played a great game, it continues right there, even with this lead, confident to throw the pass and have the reception made. There's no doubt who the leader of their team is, is there? There's no doubt who they want to ride all the way to the finish, because strategy would tell you, run the football, run the clock down. Instead, they're letting him throw it because they feel that confident in what he's getting done. Here we go now. Now a play fake here on first down. And pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. Well, it's easy to see when we review this that the ball needs to come out quicker because if you don't throw it right on the break, you bring a crowd of people into the equation. And that's why it got knocked away there. After the incomplete pass here now is second and ten. to throw again. Daniel throwing for his running back and he's got him complete. A very solid gain of 27. Well, probably the only thing he did wrong there was go out of bounds nursing this fourth quarter lead. You want to stay in, eat the clock. Yeah, you got to love the effort, the catch, the extra yardage, but you got to know the situation. Stay in bounds, young man. Show a first and ten now in Denver territory as they've got it to the 28-yard line. Throwing again is Daniel. And that is incomplete. Let's face it, perfection is something we all chase, whether it's playing this game or whatever we do. Hard to attain, but that's what they were searching for as that pass goes incomplete. So now they'll come up on second and 10, once again from the 28. Hey, 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 we got three. Set. Green, 39. Second and 10, Daniel again. And that's incomplete. He was looking for the tight end, Adam Shaheen, that time. Third down here. 
It's always tough for the guys throwing the football when they think they've got a completion and the ball's almost there, and then someone sneaks a hand or two in and bats it away. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have them looking at third and ten. All right, here we go. Three, 19. To the air again, Daniel. He'll leave it for Cohen, complete. And he'll be brought down at the 21, just shy of the 20 in the red zone. Call it a pickup of seven, and that'll bring up fourth down. Instead of throwing it downfield, Charles, they just tried to dump it underneath there. Do you like the call? I do. I think it's a high percentage play because you get the completion, and what you're counting on is your back to use his legs and his elusiveness to make people miss and pick up the first down. In this case, it didn't happen. So they'll turn to the kicker again. He's been a busy man thus far. This to make it a three-score game late. And Parkey's kick is good. And that will make this now a 19-point advantage. So with that, you figure now this game's pretty much out of reach at this point. Yeah, it's going to take a heck of a comeback to come from three scores down. But don't change that channel. Don't go away. Miracles can happen. And you want to be here in case it does. You're a company man. Aren't I, though? This one taken just inside the 10. And a nice job there as he gets this one up just shy of the 35-yard line at the 34. And coming out now, the Broncos. And tough to win games if you're going field goal, field goal, field goal here. They got field goal last time. Now they'll be looking for a touchdown. They're looking for the big chunk now because, as you noted, the field goal, field goal, field goal way of doing it makes it that much harder and puts more pressure on every possession for you now. All right, here we go. Go ahead and get six and feel a lot more comfortable about the position they're in. Bigger chunks. We'll see if they can get the score. Now here's a pass on first down that's knocked away and incomplete. And that one goes in. Incomplete. They tried something out of the bag of tricks, but it's incomplete and now second down. Now it's Lynch. And he comes back with one complete. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. That one going for a gain of 11 and a Bronco first down. One of the selling points at the in route is it gives the quarterback a really nice sight line to his receiver and almost on a direct shot, able to throw the ball into the middle of the field and have a great chance of success as they did on that play. A really nice gain of 25 yards. Lynch now, a perfect eight for eight to start the second half. Not bad. First and ten. Set, three, 19. Throwing again here. Lynch throwing middle, but it's incomplete. I know coaches tell us all the time that having a powerful arm isn't the number one thing they look for in a quarterback. But when you're trying to throw inside routes and you need to put some heat on it, it helps have the big gun. In this case, just a little bit too much. Here's second and ten now from the 29. Second and ten now, it's Lynch. And this time he's got the hookup, it's complete. And he'll be a couple yards shy of the red zone here at the 22-yard line. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. You're tackling them almost on the spot. That means they have to run extra plays, harder to move it. Open man, and that's his tight end, Jake Butt. And that little deke, the juke move that we saw, able to give him the first down yardage before he's brought down. That one good for seven as this long drive continues and the chains move again. That's a staple of this offense. Drag route to the tight end. Yeah, he's unable to use his size to break off much more yardage after the catch, but still an effective gain nonetheless. They go play action here on first down. Blitz coming and down he goes. 
And it's never good to take a sack. You really don't want to take one down here in this part of the field down near the red zone. Not at all, because you're already pretty much assured of a field goal. But you take a big sack, it could push you out of range, and that's why defenses get a little more aggressive in this situation. They're almost conceding the three points. They want to push you back and try and take you out of that. Now they're in some hot water now. After that sack, it's second and 21. Now it's Lynch. His throw caught right around the six. 23 yards on the play. and goal and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game time for a break we'll come back and see this one out after this so it's bronco football as we get your reset here they've got it first and goal as they look to punch in a late score touchdown as his guys are in for six and the Broncos cut into that lead I'm not sure win-win is the proper term here but it certainly felt like it they got the touchdown they needed but if I'm on the defensive side of the ball okay you got the touchdown but it sure took you a long time yeah because offensively there you're probably hoping for a one to five play drive that one ate up a little more time than they were hoping you're exactly right and if you have that one to five play drive you actually build up momentum and even more hope when they had to slog their way downfield. They got the touchdown, but it's almost like, ah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you know. Doesn't you kinda, feel right. Exactly. <laughs> McManus's point after is good. And that will shave one more off this lead. Two scores down, three timeouts left. Still a chance if they can somehow get this one back. And the Bears' hands team able to pounce on it and get the football. They knew they needed a miracle. They had to have that onside kick. They didn't get it. Well, as we knew, even before they put the, the toe to the leather on that one, their chances of getting that done, slim and none. And I do believe we saw Slim just leave the door, didn't we? We did indeed. I think we're down to none. And now Chicago getting ready to go as they take the field. And they're not going to play this conservative, I don't think. They had the field goal last time, and they're up. But they're looking to put a drive in the end zone. Oh, I agree with you totally. No one is, goes out on the field and says, all right, let's just settle for three, except in certain situations, trying to ice a game, that sort of deal. Most of the time, it's end zone, and that's what you're thinking. And I believe that's exactly what they're thinking as they begin this one. Yeah, no quarterback ever goes out there saying, hey, let's get three, right? right. <laughs> Not one that I've ever met. This, in all probability, another run here on second and eight. Now let's go! Blue Again, Cunningham here on the ground. And they went the wrong way there. Losing yardage back at the 43-yard line. The first down line at the 34 here on third down. And they'll run it here. And here he'll be brought down a little shy of the 35 at the 36. Now the Broncos will use their third and final timeout as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. All right, so the timeout over and all 11 men back out onto the field for the defense. 
Here we go on fourth. Daniel finds his target. It's Bellamy. And he's going to get this inside the 30. That one a backbreaker as they wind up converting there on fourth. Fourth down trailing in the fourth quarter. They felt compelled to go for it, and they got it. Well, I'd look down at my play sheet, and what I would find, plays that have been successful throughout the game that have worked in the distance you need, and that's exactly what they got done. And not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and ten. And on the ground they go with a running back. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest game. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. Charles, why didn't they just take the knee there? You're asking the question that I'm asking as well, because we've seen a lot of football where coaches decide maybe they get a little greedy. I don't know if they're doing it for stats or for what reason. We've seen it happen in college. And how about in the NFL? The miracle of the Meadowlands. All they had to do was take a knee, and the game was over. The Giants ran it one more time. Ball popped free. Philadelphia picks it up and wins the game. What year was that? 1978. I think it was in November. A lot of scoring. There's no doubt about that in this one, Charles. Points, they were not at a premium. They were pretty easy to come by. <laughs> they were, but it was fun, wasn't it? Because both teams finding ways to click. And you know people who love this game, they also love baseball games that are 14 to 11 with three or four home runs mixed in. So that'll do it for us, for my partner, Charles Davis, and all the hardworking men and women on our crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL right here on EA Sports. The Bears get the win at home as we say so long from Soldier Field.